Hello, everyone. My name is Austin Belzer. Uh, I am here for representing Austin B Media, uh, a company I started, gosh, a year and a half ago. Um, and I am covering the Austin Film Festival. And today I've got the wonderful filmmakers and talent behind the film The Grand Bolero, which is screening at the Austin Film Festival. Um, it's actually premiering at the State Theater on Sunday, October 24th at 4 p.m. Central. And we'll be screening virtually via Eventive, uh, which is $12 for anyone who doesn't have a pass. Uh, but that will be screening virtually uh, throughout the entire festival um, from the 21st through the 28th, um, I believe. Uh, correct me if I misquoted. Um, but yeah, yeah um, so this is to anyone uh, who wants, to, what is the Grand Bolero uh, about? Uh, should I go for it? Yes, anyone. Um, okay, just like to, uh, Grand Bolero is like a 90 minutes feature. Uh, it's a thriller, romantic thriller, I will call, uh, about Roxanne, which is uh, Lydia Vitale here. Um, she plays this really gruff, middle-aged uh, pipe organ cleaner uh, really mean with like anyone, you know, like she's really disillusioned uh, about life. Um, and uh, throughout the whole movie, like she, she gets a new assistant to help her uh, clean an organ uh, during the, the COVID-19 lockdown. Um, her name is Lucia and she's uh, the other lead, uh, lead of, uh, oh my God, I'm spacing out, uh, Ludovica no Mancini. Um, so throughout the movie, uh, she basically struggles to control her obsessive attraction to her. Uh, the Lucia, she's like way younger than her. Uh, she's in her 20s and she's mute, so she can't communicate with her. Um, that's, that's briefly what it is about. So it's really like a story about obsession, the, the obsession of uh, Roxanne. Okay, and then um, Lydia, um, I, this is for you. Um, so this story, like uh, Gabriel uh, just explained, is a romance story between an organist, and correct me if I'm wrong, anyone, uh, an organist and an assistant. So I, I guess in your acting, what um, stereotypes did you actively try to avoid with that young, uh, older person, younger person dynamic? Um, because I think that can kind of be an area where someone is tempted to maybe lean a little too into a stereotype of some sort? Um, I think especially talking about Italy, we are really just touching, you know, all the situation of gender and uh, all these uh, subjects are really becoming now central in the, in the discussion, the political discussion. So finally, I would say. <laughs> and... So also the, the matter of, of uh, homosexuality and uh, a difference of ages is something that uh, we are really getting to now. This is one of the reasons I've chosen also the material because I thought for, for, for Italy was very, very important to me to talk about something that usually we escape to, to, to tell about. I mean, a relationship between an older woman and a young woman as much as we're more used to to see um, masculine gay couple, maybe in the in the in the in the in the, in the collective imaginary. So this was one of the point that was interesting to me to offer, to, to go deeper into it. By the way, is love as no age for me, and as much as no gender. So there was not such a difficulty to me to get involved into that character. And um, this was more because I need to tell this story somehow, you know, to, to introduce the subject in my country, which is, you know, still a little bit of a, of a taboo to talk about, oh my gosh, I held a woman with a younger one. I just had a friend of mine married with, a, with, a, with another one and there are two women. So I think we're getting into the subject now and I'm happy to be one of the of those who is going to tell a story about it. Yeah, and you know, uh, you talk about Italy, 
and I was reading up a little bit, um, and it, it says that you guys shot this during the lockdown. Um, and um, so I guess th this is for anybody. Um, what this is kind of a stereotypical question in itself. Um, I'm sure you're getting this a lot. Um, but what challenges arose out of that? Did you have to kind of swerve left where you'd normally go right? Um, especially for intimate movies such as this? You mean the fact that we're shooting during the, the, the COVID period? Um, in in it, Italy. Um, during the Actually, we're shooting really in the, in the center of the pandemic. Okay. Really, where everything started in Italy, so it was really in the red zone of Italy, where we were shooting. So, okay, and that's my bad. I I misread something, and um, so um, apologies for that. Um, and um, apologies if I don't get names right. Um, uh, so I believe. We have the woman who plays the assistant, right? Um, sorry if I don't know your name. Um, oh no, I'm not the I'm not the actress. Uh, I'm co-writer with Gabe. Okay, so yeah. okay, again, bad on me. Um, so so Gabe, um, let's go to to the um, story. Um, I I kind of have a was this idea something that was in your mind already pre all of this stuff, uh, the, all the pandemic stuff, uh, or was this just something that kind of you're sitting around and saying, you know what, this would be a really nice romance story for the um, pandemic or post pandemic era. Okay. Uh, can I turn off my video? It's just because I think my wifi is really low. Uh, yeah. can I do that? Yeah, no problem. Okay. You still hear me? You still hear yeah, me? I can still hear you. Okay. So, okay. So the story, I wanted to do something about Pipo because it was always fascinated. And basically in every short or project that I did, most, like most of them, I tried to squeeze in a score with organ too, you know? Uh, I was always fascinated about this instrument and I was actually really uh, pissed to not find so many uh, uh, films or documentaries about it. You know, there are actually, now they're coming up some more documentaries, but there's no like a feature that really describes how the instrument works. And it's so fascinating, you know, and it's such a, you know, like movies were born with silent cinema. And, you know, especially in US, you have a lot of like, uh, you still have a lot of, the, of these theaters with organs in it. And they were playing silent movies, you know, and to me, it's crazy that like, why don't people talk about this? <laughs> so I really wanted to, to do this for uh, a long time, uh, but I never thought about doing it right now. Um, and that's where Italy came in too. Uh, we were writing a different script at the beginning of the pandemic and we started to pitch that, but it was, uh, it was too much. Like uh, we, we needed too, many money, uh, too much money to make. So me and Italy looked into each other and said, like, uh, we need to rewrite this uh, into something that we are more, uh, that we can have access to. And I knew Paolo Sambito, which is another uh, composer of this film. And uh, he, I knew that I could get access to this, like, massive instruments and to this pipe organ world. So we said, let's write something about this. So me and Italy, basically March, or was it March or summer? I think it was around March 2020. No, a little bit later than that, in okay. the midst of it. Though. Okay, yeah, that's when we started to like really sit down and write the, the Bolero. So you talk about the world of um, or organ music, um, and apologies if you've answered this before. Um, I, I kind of want to focus in on that. Um, and you say you've always had a love um, for it. Um, and I, I, I'm, did you have to like, so you've already like, apologies, coffee has not hit yet. 
Um, <laughs> it, it is a little early for me, um, but um, so did you have to do any, any like additional research? Did you go to a church and say, hey, I want to talk to your head or, uh, organist? Would that be the term? Uh, well, that's, yeah, <laughs> uh, you know, the while writing the script, we had uh, uh, Paolo uh, Martino, which is here on the line, like um, Alessandro Giacobazzi. I basically met like a lot of organists uh, and each and every one of them, of them helped me out to, you know, verify the script, you know, like, is this the correct term? You know, like, how do you fix an organ, you know, or um, what's the stop called? You know, like they they really taught me how the instruments worked. So that way we knew that we were able to include like truthful uh, information into the script. Yeah, I knew very little about a pipe, pipe organ other than having heard the music and whatnot. And so in the writing, I had to like research absolutely everything I could find. Gabe sent me documentaries and like I became a pseudo expert on pipe organs in the process of writing it um, because of, I suppose Gabe, Gabe had a better understanding, um, but no, there was a lot of research and then a lot of having to verify the research and make sure that it was accurate. And as well as we had to learn a lot about it because I never touched an organ before in my life. Really oh. had to, to be confident with the pieces, you know, how you move it, how you, you know, how you handle it. It was very interesting actually. It was one of the interesting part of the process. Yeah, and I, I think to talk to uh, Gabe's kind of um, thing about it is, I, I I grew up in well my par my grandparents grew up in, in a church that had an organ, but it's that kind of thing they used as like almost set dressing, right. um, where it's like oh look at these pipes we'll play them like once a year and then never again um, because they've got to look spotless. Um, just these big metal tubes coming out of nowhere um, for no reason. Um, and, you know, it, it, it's interesting, you know, um, it's, it's very interesting because it's that world that I think, unless you listen to classical music or however you want to identify it, um, you don't think about, again, like you said, Gabe, uh, Gabe um, but yeah, so, and you had to learn uh, how to play? Uh, actually, a little bit. So this is why I suggested, Gabriel, to really cut everything where I was supposed to play. <laughs> that was so embarrassing to see because we actually didn't have much time to rehearse all this. And so it was, I, I think it's like really unpolite and uh, uh, really not um educated you know to to show something that you cannot really do very well so because of the the lack of time we had to prepare the thing we didn't have the possibility i would love love to to learn much more about it how to, to play to but it takes really a long preparation that actually we didn't have so it's it's, um, it's fun because i really told gabriele please don't edit anything with my hands on the piano on the organ because it looks horrible because I cannot play it. <laughs> yeah like in the in the film like uh if you see the previous card there's much more like hand uh shown but then as we progressed we were just like eh, let's get it out 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 you know Wait. uh there's still some uh scenes that I kept uh just because like you know like it would be weird if <laughs> you know you really want to see the hands you know so not, not giving a way is basically saying like oh we're not good at it you know so i really kept only the parts that either like the actors who knew how to play uh or uh the the one where the hands were more in sync uh and actually like the composers uh, martino and sean they really helped me out to like sync you know like the old score based to the actor's hands you know that was like a huge <laughs> amount of work yeah. <laughs> I, I can only imagine i mean like Oh, hey, we got to make sure these movements match up. Well, here's this different et, uh, file of just somebody, uh, extreme close up of just somebody else's hands. Uh, but yep, I, yep, yep. Um, 
And, and it's funny because there was a joke when La La Land came out. Every time it cuts to uh, the hands, it's like, is he really playing? It, I don't think so. <laughs> this uh, is the magic of the movie. Yeah. You can pretend to be yeah. something you're not. Exactly. Guys, I really have to apologize, but I really need to leave. And good luck for the festival yeah. and enjoy it and have a great time. Yeah, you oh, too. Thank you, Lydia. Bye. Can't wait uh, to see you in Rome. I see you yeah, soon. Hopefully, hopefully. <laughs> I'm not still in on the movie. Ciao. Oh yeah, right. Yeah, we'll see each other. Ciao, Lydia. Thank you a lot. Ciao. Okay. Um, and then I guess um, Gabrielle, um, th this your film is in competition at the festival. Um, and I guess any, anyone else can answer this, um, but um, how does that feel? I mean, I know it's not Sundance, but it's still a very big film festival to have your film playing at. Um, even, you know, because I was watching a video last night of um, like, uh, it was like a super cut of all the, the Game of Thrones writers. And there's one mm -hmm. shot at like some film festival and I looked back at the background and it was Austin Film Festival. So I suddenly realized, oh, this is huge for filmmakers like you who yeah. um, maybe don't have an outlet at those bigger festivals, but like, it, but yeah, how, how does that feel? Um, I know it's kind of a we oh. weird question, but bear with me. I think you can relate. It feels great. <laughs> no, it really does feel <laughs> great. And what is really like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, 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 I look like a groupie, but yeah, it does feel great. <laughs> uh, the, what is really great about it, and that's like, personally, it's a success. It's that, you know, we don't have a distributor, right? And usually like to get to like big festivals, they always give spots to, you know, distributed films. You know, it's the distributor reaching out to them and say, hey, we want to premiere at your festival, give us a spot, mm -hmm. okay? And so the festival, they, they basically give all these spots to these great movies and then only like one or like 2%, it's what they pick from Film Freeway, you know, from like the, the submission, you know? And yeah. all the festival that we submitted to, you know, we are also into the San Luis Film Festival, oh. which, uh, if you didn't hear about it, it's pretty like great for Italian movies because, like, like the Oscar-winning *The Great Beauty* when they're uh, *Call Me by wow. Your Name*, like, you know, you know, that's the caliber, you know. And yeah. what they told us is that ours is one of those movies they they just discovered through the submission, you know. And when you hear that, and you know that that to me is a success. Because like I really didn't push for them to 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 take it, you know. They found it, you know. That to me and Austin, same thing. And we are in competition, like the only Italian film from the seventh uh, in competition. That to me is like, I'm done, guys. <laughs> uh, it really does feel good. Uh, and you know your note about um, films that you know don't have distribution yet. You know I. Maybe it's just because I was at AFI Fest a, a year ago today. Uh, well, at um, virtually, but um, I, I, I think a lot of my favorite films there were the smaller films that didn't have a distributor, like um, the uh, film Selva, Selva Tragica, which is in English is Tragic Jungle and uh, Prime Time and all these movies got picked up by Netflix um, and um, I really love that didn't have a distributor, um, but now it went to Netflix. And then, um, oh shoot, what was the, uh, it, the Spanish title was El Profugo, The Intruder, which is kind of a similar movie to this one actually. And, but instead of focusing on organist, it focuses on the, I guess it would be psychosexual, yeah. Um, experience of uh, of a voice actor, and I think that's why I like going to these festivals is finding these. I don't want to say weird, but 
smaller movies that like just, see it. <laughs> just blow my mind. Um, well, it's like I was talking to the director of Cram yesterday and um, director of Spaghetti Junction yesterday, and I, in both of those interviews, I started to realize no, the, these films, um, you know, distributor or not, um, I think they're as merited as, you know, the bigger films, you know, be, being released by Lionsgate or Netflix or whoever. And if I may make a suggestion, uh, maybe contact MUBI, uh, M-U-B-I. They seem to be really um, into foreign films. Um, like I just mm -hmm. watched Azur. Um, I believe that's how I pronounce that. I don't know. Um, but it's a Spanish film about... Um, well, corruption uh, in local, uh, I'm forgetting what the movie's about, but the point is um, they're into a lot of foreign films, and I think, really, if you want a distributor, I think that's a, a lot of people who watch foreign films are also subscribed to that movie service. Uh, the yeah, movie movie is really great. Um, yeah. I know that I know that um, we we're gonna reach out to them <laughs> once the festival is over because because <laughs> yes. yeah we're really busy uh, at this moment. But uh, no, yeah. I knew movie yeah. and I, I also love the their their list of movies too. I discovered so many great international films there. Yeah, and I think you know they're giving I think a voice to these those films that aren't being picked up by big streamers. Um, um, and I think that's fascinating, you know, because a lot of the movies I've seen at AFI Fest last year still don't have distribution, and that puzzles me, quite frankly, um, especially when some of them are awards winners. And it's just like, what? How, how does that <laughs> not just immediately get picked up by, I don't know, like HBO Max or something like that? But Because, it, you know... I'll, it depends on like you know you can have like great stories you know but uh, if you don't have uh, like a Scarlett Johnson in it you know like yeah. or uh, really like a named actor that is gonna bring money back is really it is really tough to sell it you know uh, yeah. usually distributor they they're looking for that you know because they need money back you know so every time that they need to distribute like a movie like ours you know or any other independent film. They always take a leap of faith, you know, like, we really like this. Uh, I think the story is great, but, you know, like, we, I don't know how to market it, you know, because there's no cast in it, you know, or, like, uh, you know. Lydia is, is really well known in Italy, but, you know, like, it's, it's just in Italy, you know. Yeah. Um, so distributors, that's always the conflict with distributors. Um, but is, I think it's just so to be stubborn. Festivals, because that becomes our platform, you know. Yeah. And why it's so great to be included in something like Austin Film Festival. Yeah, and they, as you see, like they help so much, you know, like with, um, mm -hmm. with anything, like getting, getting press, you know, like uh, they reach out to distributor themselves, you know. So mm -hmm. Austin, it's really like our, uh, it's like our mother, you know, like she's taking care of us. <laughs> Based on the amount of emails I've gotten this week, I would say that's pretty accurate. I mean, right? <laughs> this is. This is a crazy amount of emails. I started the week w with a very clean and tidy, like 65 emails. And I bet you if I look in my inbox right now, it's like 113. Yep. Um, now, most of those are just other stuff. But I mean, the amount of stuff I've replied to from Austin Film Festival alone is just insane. Like, I, besides this interview, I've got a, another interview in like, 30 minutes and it's like that's never happened before um <laughs> but yeah I, it's interesting you bring up dis um the distributor problem because i do think that's one of the benefits of doing this virtually as well because the big worry i have going to physical only is you inherently can see can only see a limited amount of films um, mm -hmm. because of screening scheduling. Um, but with virtual, I, 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 I have seen more uh, virtually than I could ever see physically. 
like I'll see four or yeah. five films in a day and then it'll be like midnight outside. And then I'm like, <laughs> oh, right. It's dark outside. I should probably go eat dinner. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, 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 yeah, I, I, I just hope that, I, yeah, I, I know they'll take care of you because I think they're doing a very great job about getting everything out there in a tidy way. Um, yeah. Even more so than the big festivals like um, Tribeca or um, Sundance or even, not to disparage AFI, but AFI Fest. They're not <laughs> gr particularly great at that. But, but, yeah, I mean, I can't, uh, like, Austin Festival really, like, it's it's one of the best, like, festival experience because they love their movies, you know? Yeah. And they do, like, we do meetings, like, almost every week about marketing and, you know, they, they want to know what your film is about, who to tailor, you know, who, who to target, it, you know? So they are really, really invested. They do really <laughs> anything that they can, you know? It's they are humble people you know they're not you know crazy you know like uh pretentious you know like people that oh we are a big boss and you know it's not like that um so we're really finding ourselves like uh you know at home with this festival yeah um and yeah that, that that's actually just a fascinating note um because i and i think if you're talking to other people, I will say this works just for me. Um, make sure people put it on IMDb, the review links to the reviews, um, because I put oh, okay, yeah. I put a link to a review I published a couple of weeks ago, um, and that has over 200 views now just from IMDb itself. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're gonna we we have a page. We're gonna link everything to that. Yeah, because I think, um, and I'll probably say this to everyone I talked to today. Um, I I probably should email the other two people I talked to yesterday, um, and tell them about that. Um, because, and I think the role of the festival is just to lift up these films that people don't talk about, um, in, in the normal year, um. And I, I'll be fascinated to see what the highlights of AFF are um, versus what the the films that maybe only two people are watching. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, because there are those films where I'm like, or I think I saw Mother Schmuckers at Sundance for like 14 minutes. I was like, I'm good. But other people <laughs> were like, I watched the whole thing. It was fantastic. And I'm like, is it really? Is it? Yeah. <laughs> but, but anyways, um, yeah. I I, I just want to thank everyone for coming on. Um, because oh, actually, uh, do you wanna? Uh, sorry, uh, but do you wanna ask uh, anything to Martino? Because he's gonna want to even talk. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Um, I guess Martino, you can kind of speak to your experience on the film. I. I apologize, I, I didn't talk to you more. Um, so w what was your experience on the film and what, what would you have to say to those who maybe want to check this out on their own and uh, virtually? Uh, so Martino, uh, <laughs> scusa prima di tutto perché non, non ti ha interpellato così tanto. Uh -huh. e ti vuole chiedere, um, can you repeat the question actually? <laughs> Yeah, I was just saying uh, what his experience was on the film and what he would want to uh -huh. say to those who, um, festival goers or people watching at home who want to check out this film. Okay. Uh, quindi, qual è stata la tua esperienza? Uh, Come è stata uh, lavorare in questo film? E cosa vorresti dire alle persone che, che, che lo vogliono vedere a casa o a questi festival? Mm. Beh, innanzitutto, I'm very happy to meet you, but uh, I'm, I'm sorry if I don't speak in English in this interview, because I'm not sure of my English and I need the help of uh, Gabriele, and I thank uh, really Gabriele for 
the translation. <ride> allora, uh, about the film, allora, è stata sicuramente una... È stata un'esperienza molto molto interessante, ma perché è molto insolita la tipologia di, di, di questo film legato a questo tipo di musiche. E, e, e considero proprio una fortuna aver incontrato Gabriele, che mi ha permesso insomma, di esprimere proprio quello che è il mio strumento, eh, il mio strumento preferito, che è l'organo, e di poterlo fare, mh, far leggere a i futuri spettatori in una chiave un po' insolita rispetto a quello che, che è l'organo eh, nel, nell'immaginario comune. Ok, uh, just give uh, I'm gonna start translating. Um, so, well, um, he said thank you. <laughs> uh, but, uh, so, for, for his experience, it was an, an unusual movie to make. Uh, and he, well, he, he thanks me <laughs> for bringing him on board. Uh, because pipe organ is basically his favorite instrument and so he was really happy to to showcase you know his passion uh, for these pipe organs and he's actually really happy that we we are proposing not the church version of a pipe organ you know um, I'm gonna expand a little bit on that uh, he's referring to like George Gershwin you know like uh, Ravel Bolero we basically took classical pieces that are not strictly meant for the organ and we arranged those, you know, so uh, he was really fan of that. Credo che fosse desiderio comune apposta insieme a Gabriele e anche a, alle altre persone che hanno collaborato proprio di, eh, esatto, quest'ultima frase che ha detto, eh, che ha tradotto Gabriele, di, di, di far vedere una versione insolita eh, di questo strumento. Eh, ed è stata veramente una, un, una sfida, perché non è semplice mh, come dire, scomporre qualche cosa che... Eh, Gabriele, aiutami tu! Eh, scomporre qualche cosa che in realtà lo, lo si immagina tutto di un pezzo e riuscire a, 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 a modificarlo. Non dico migliorarlo, perché le musiche che abbiamo utilizzato mh, sono musiche di alcune di grandissimi compositori, rielaborate, ma in una chiave molto particolare, perché addirittura una chiave ehm, non necessariamente mh, perfetta, ecco. Perché in alcune musiche abbiamo addirittura appositamente scordato gli strumenti per dare degli effetti. Ok, so um, he's like expanding again to like this unusual pipe organ. Um, so what he says is that like it was really hard to, you know, take a classical piece that was like all done and rearrange it, uh, take it apart, you know, and actually like not always for like the best way, you know, because sometimes we out of tune the organ, you know, especially in the first half of the movie, there was this, you know, like the organ that you hear, it's really out of tune, you know, but it's because the organ is not fixed in the movie, you know. Um, so there were all these different like interesting choices that we made, uh, uh, you know, to just, uh, you know, like, uh, use the pipe organ at its best of its possibilities, you know? Yeah, and um, that's, that's fascinating. I, I did not realize when I was listening to it that it was just, it, well, not just, that it was rearranged. I, I kind of figured, and maybe this is just the, um, not music snob, but uh, the the uncultured, um, non-classical listener that I am, um, that I, I didn't notice, um, but I appreciate it so much uh, more um, knowing that. Um, and um, yeah, I, that's, that, that's fascinating is my overall thought. <laughs> Uh, quindi lui dice uh, che è molto affascinante questa cosa che abbiamo fatto. Lui non ascolta la musica classica, quindi non ha, non ha capito che era out of tune, queste cose qua non gli sono sfuggite, però sapere tutte queste informazioni è rimasto wow, affascinato. Mm -hmm. No, fantastico, speriamo, confidiamo tutti nel, nel successo di questo film, grazie a Gabriele. Oh my, I'm not going to translate that. <laughs> no, no. It, it's just, it, it's just boosting me. 
<laughs> no, he says that like it's really. He, he, I hope that everyone you know will react the same. Like like, oh, this is fascinating, you know. Um, so yeah, he, he wrote. He hopes a lot of success for this movie. <laughs> well, uh, let Martin know. I I did catch some of that because I did try to take Italian a few years oh. ago. Um, a little bit, not much, but. Uh, a little bit ago, I was planning on taking a trip to uh, Italy and Greece, and, but I had to delay it. Um, and I was like, I got to learn Italian because otherwise I'm going to be that guy standing in the street looking at a book, being like, just pointing to the book. <laughs> sì, uh, ha detto che ha capito un po' di cose che hai detto. Perché hai, cap- hai capito no, anche tu? Some, some thing, I, I understand some things, but uh, yes, I understand, but I prefer the help of Gabriele, but I understand. So you speak a little bit uh, Italian. A little bit, uh, just like a I few words. Your, uh, your Italian is better than my English. Yeah, so like, yeah, it's, it, it is, it may be all learned by osmosis through this film because I've actually learned a bit of Spanish through some of this uh, me- uh, Mexican movies and Spanish movies I've seen. Mm-hmm. Um, j- just enough to where I can pick up little tiny words. So what you're saying, I, I uh, yeah, I, I, I can pick up a little bit. I, I can't ca- carry a conversation at all it'll sound very, very um, um, broken, um, but just a little bit, enough to be dangerous. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, beh, nella sua stessa barca, anche lui sa pochissimo, proprio solo per, perché voleva andare in Italia e <laughs> almeno non essere, insomma, uh, guardare il cellulare, e almeno dire le cose basilari. Mm. I speak the international language, the music. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm going to... You, you guys can use that as the pull quote to the poster. That is... Just put that <laughs> on the poster and then just... Hey, movie. Buy our movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah uh, thanks for the suggestion. I think we're going to do something with it. Yeah, but... Um, yeah, um... Yeah, all of this is fascinating. Um, and I just want to thank you, Martin, for coming on at what, what is it there, like six, seven o'clock? Now, uh, um, 7 p.m. 6 see, and 40. See, you would, not, uh, you would not get me on an interview at 7 p.m. That's not happening ever. <laughs> um, because that's that's dinner time and that ain't. That, that ain't flying. Um, <laughs> but uh, Martin, I want to um, especially thank you for coming on because I know it's nighttime there. Um, and everyone else, I want to thank you guys for coming on. Um, and again, I want to emphasize um, the Grand Bolero is screening at the State Theater uh, on this Sunday, on October 24th at 4 p.m. Central uh, and Eventive for the entire Austin Film Festival for just 12 bucks. Um, it's 12 bucks. That's going to be what you spend on a movie rental anyways. Um, I know some of you want to watch Titan, but maybe watch the Grand Bolero also um, because I, I think it, it'll be a treat for anyone who watches. Um, but yeah, again, thank you guys so much for coming on. It's been a true, true pleasure. And maybe, Martin, one day I'll cook. I'll come by and a- ask you uh, all about the thing, uh, the things I don't know about organs. Qualche te lo traduco? Sì, quest'ultima cosa non ho Ho detto, ci ha ringraziato tutti. Oh, Austin, uh, Austin Reed, thank you a lot. Uh, I'm just going to translate. So, yeah, ci ringrazia tutti, ha detto che... <laughs> Ha uh, detto l'informazione del film e l'ultima cosa: ha detto la prossima volta che vengo in Italia ti vengo a trovare così mi spieghi un po' l'organo. <laughs> of course, will be a very pleasure for me to explain you the, the, the world of the pipe organ. 
the crazy world of pipe organs. <laughs> yeah, it sounds no, like I'm it. Really, really appreciate it so much to, for, for this time, you know, and for this interview. Yeah, no problem. I, I, I let me hit the.